it's cool to be cool. Yes, it's fun to be fun. It hurts to be licking these wounds when you're running to run. It ain't pace to be kind. So don't you pay me no mind. It's cool to be cool and it's fun to be fun. Staying up late at night. Waking up late at day. There's a bottle of sunshine sitting by my window pane. It's all blending together. These delusions of grandeur. Take a ride to forever and a broken down Ford Ranger. Well, it's cool to be cool. Yes, it's fun to be fun. But it hurts to be licking these wounds when you're running around. And it pays to be kind. Don't you pay me no mind But it's cool to be cool And it's fun to be fun Come on, boy Yes, I'm a clown It's a clown with a frown And these big old red shoes Are just weighing me down I want to fly trapeze But I don't want to fall So I pick up the phone And give my brother a call And ain't nobody home Where all the wild things roam And I'm out in the woods Completely alone Yeah, it's cool to be cool it's fun to be fun But it hurts to be licking these wounds when you're running to run And it pays to be kind So don't you pay me no mind It's cool to be cool and it's fun to be fun Come on We're going so fast Now the future's a past Swirl around in a glass It's a puff puff pass <laughs> It's cool to be cool <laughs> It's fun to be fun It hurts to be licking these wounds When you're running around It pays to be kind So don't you pay me no mind it's cool to be cool, and it's fun to be fun. But it's cool to be cool, and it's fun to be fun. Hello, and welcome to the Organ Files podcast. First, our disclaimer. We are Novus podcasters simply for entertainment. If we misquote or offend, it was not on purpose to do so. Today is a very special day because we're recording with our first musician that we're going to interview here. And of course, we're at the Roseburg Public Library, as usual, and I'm going to turn over to my co-host, Elliot Bowman. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate all the, uh, the feedback from our Halloween episode. That was a lot of fun. Mark's brother showing up in a, uh, a Ghostbuster outfit to add to the, the theme of our Halloween episode. If you hadn't had a chance to listen to that one, check us out wherever you get your podcast. If you want to get a hold of the show, you can get us at Oregon Files podcast at yahoo.com and uh you know hope everyone's having a good start to your november and had a good halloween but like mark said uh, we're super stoked to have a musician songwriter performer singer uh, neil gregory johnson just just excited to get to know him and you know hear hear his story and, and how he got into music so welcome sir hey how's it going good did you grow up around here came up here when I was a little kid, my parents brought me up here and lived out in 10 Mile. Oh, cool. And so when I was a little kid, I went to 10 Mile School and then then moved away. Uh, we moved to, yeah, I moved all over the place. Man. Yeah. My parents were all over the place. They were musicians too. And oh, okay. Cool. Kind of worked odd jobs and, you know, we were, we we're always fighting and breaking up and then getting back <laughs> together. And, and so I kind of grew up with that lifestyle. And, um, and then we moved to Nevada 
and they played music around there and we had a little place around there in in the middle of Nevada in the middle of nowhere 100 miles from any grocery store so you know really yeah um so I lived in the desert and then uh moved down to Arizona I went to high school for a little time before I got kicked out and and then got a job went to California for a bit came back to Oregon and I was like oh it's like home so I'm, so I settled into Oregon and and I've been here about 12 years now awesome Man, so you guys were like a traveling band, like you played together? Yeah. When I was a teenager, we yeah. did. You know, I played music with my parents and go gig around with them. That's cool. So, mm-hmm. Man, so do they still play music today or? Yeah. My dad yeah. has a band and you see him at the Saturday market with his band every oh, once cool. in a while. And then my mom has her own band, like a country band. And okay. They play at the Eagles and all over the place in Settle and Roseburg. That's awesome. awesome. So, Do you ever play together with them now or? Matter of fact, me and my mom are doing a little gig up at the little brother's pub here downtown Roseburg. Uh, awesome. In a week or two. So, awesome. That's yeah, very that's cool. It's the first time we played together in a long time. That's, that's awesome. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that literally answers my first question. Did you grow up in a musical family? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what was kind of like the first instruments that you started learning to play? I remember uh, when we were in Oregon, my mom used to have these drum circles, you know, kind of hippie drum circles. And... um. <laughs> They gave me one of those uh, native flutes. Mm. I'd say Indian flute because that's what I always say. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> you know, and it's just like one of those little woodwind flutes. Yeah, and I kind of started jamming with that, and they're like, "Dang, you're natural at this!" And then, and then my my mom had a banjo that I used to pick up and annoy the neighborhood with, and sit <laughs> on the front porch with my banjo. Yeah, it was my mom's banjo and. So I, I always grew up with guitars and everything around. I didn't really get serious about it till I was about 12 or 13 uh-huh. years old, though. Yeah. And is banjo a tough one to learn how to play? Banjo is just a banjo. And yeah. I didn't know how to play it when I was playing it. Right. But that's the cool thing about instruments is you just pick them up and go. And right. It's going to sound like crap for a while. And, right. <laughs> but when I was a little kid, I had a big imagination. So I always imagined that I sounded good. Right. That's, that's <laughs> the way. Yeah. Right. Love how many instruments do you play today? Uh, I play a lot of string instruments, so mandolin, guitar, bass, um, play some drums, I guess, play, p- play piano, mm-hmm. anything I could do to record with, or I like right. to record music, so right, um, just playing around, right, making stuff up. So but, Yeah, that's awesome. Not really much of a horn guy, although uh, uh, the, the old trumpet, you know, it's a pretty cool instrument, and I played that when I was a little kid, too, in yeah. band, but... I tried the trunk when I was like in fourth grade. Yeah. Was not good at it. Yeah. I'm not very musical inclined. I you had know. trouble with the kazoo. So <laughs> the kazoo. <laughs> so you can tell. No. I'm not good I can do a little chopsticks on the piano. That's about it. You know, I was in sixth grade. I was more horny than <laughs> playing the horns. You know? Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> oh, man. And not much has changed to this day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So when did you kind of start thinking like you would want to jump into like having like your own kind of music career and and that's what you kind of wanted to do? When I was in middle school, um, I started making up my own songs and I always said that I wanted to be a musician when I grew up. Mm -hmm. So, And then as I got a little older, I got kicked out of high school and I got a job and then I got a job at a little restaurant. The boss was like, hey. Neil, you play guitar. You want to come play this catering event we're doing, and I'll pay you 150 bucks. It's for two hours. Heck yeah! And so I was like, "Yeah." He was. I was like, "You want me to sing, or what do you want me to do?" He's like, "Just play instrumental." I'm like, "Okay." So I started looking up instrumental guitar players, and I found out about. That's when I started listening to Chet Atkins and Joe Pass and um, Merle Travis and some of those kind of players. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I went did the gig and kind of faked it. Faked my way through it, faked my little jazzy gig, you know, <laughs> played as many jazz it. chords as I could, uh-huh. trying to sound fancy, and then and it worked. And I was like, wow, so I just got 150 bucks for two hours. That's more than I get paid an uh, eight-hour day at this job that I'm doing. Right. So um, washing dishes or whatever, you know. Yeah. And so I started scoring those kind of gigs down in Fresno, and, and um, that's how I got into it. And then... But I played in punk bands, and I've I'd okay. been playing music with different bands and different things. I had a metal band that I played in, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we actually traveled around in that metal band. Went to Dallas, Texas, oh, really? this festival, and 
I got to meet Vinnie Paul from Pantera. Oh, that's oh, cool. cool. And uh, that was my first strip club, actually. It was Vinnie Paul's <laughs> strip club. I was 16 years old. They didn't know that. But yeah. Yeah. I ended up eating taquitos with uh, Vinnie Paul in the corner while some <laughs> women were dancing around. And it was a great night. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. Yeah. I love so. it. That's cool. So do you do you prefer like a, a style of music over one or the other to play or to record or... Well, I have my style that I like to play now. Yeah. You know, that I like, I've kind of come up with my own little formula. I mean, it's not my own. It's pretty universal, but I've come up with my preferred formula for writing music. Yeah. And so that's, I kind of stick to that when I write my songs. Yeah. And so when I put a song down, I just, yeah, I just record them and yeah. that's what I do now. But then I've been really into like, uh, I've been kind of in this mode lately where I've been into the meditation music and all the like real ethereal kind of you know what you call it but it's just like it's like background instrumental music yeah. that makes yeah. you feel a certain way or whatever makes that's you cool wanna. um so i've been doing a little bit of that playing yeah. around what kind of instruments do you use to to record that type of music i have this big basket full of like shakers and all kinds of crap and i'll do that <laughs> i'll put some keys down yeah just like with some echo and just add a bunch of effects to it and so I made some pretty cool ones. That's awesome. I don't know. I, I get manic about music, you know. Um, my therapist says I have ADHD. Yeah. Uh, well, it's probably good though, right? I think she's full of it. But at the same time, <laughs> yeah. like, uh, she, there might be something to it because I get manic. I'm like, I'm going to go become a YouTube star and and uh, do this meditation music. But then I, uh, <laughs> and then I get making it and I'm like. This is just crap. You yeah. Know? I mean, this is awesome. It's just fun to do. Right. Yeah. At the same time, like, you want to go and make a career out of something or make money at something. You're like, right. You get back down to it. You're like, no, this is just fun. This yeah. is just good practice. It's a creative process. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have art in your life, you know, and have a yeah. good balance. Right. Totally agree. This year, I took a break from music and I started a little landscaping business. Oh, really? Just, I've been doing that around town like roof cleaning and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff like that and washing windows mm -hmm. and pressure washing and um did you like sing to yourself while you're doing that stuff like are you always like in the music kind I of like i have to charge extra yeah right no but uh i stopped playing music about, like because i was playing every day there for about a decade yeah just constantly playing. yeah i've seen you i've seen you play yeah, yeah you're really good thanks and i was just playing all all the time trying to trying to make it or whatever that means, trying to just make the bills, really. Yeah. yeah. And nowadays I'm like starting to have fun with music again because it's more of the, it's more about the art, you know, it's right. about just making stuff up. And, right. And talk, being authentic and yeah. right. talking about my own experience in the world. And it's expression. It's, it's my outlet, you know. Yeah, sure. Heck yeah. Whether it's with the music or whether it's with words and poetry or, right. you know, but... A lot of my life, I've done some crazy things in my life because of music. <laughs> I've met a lot of crazy people. Yeah. It's taken you places. It's taken me all over the place. It's kind of guided my life. Right. Music has, you know, in a big way. Yeah. Um, I have a family now, so. Yeah. I can't let it guide my life as much anymore. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's like the creative process for you? Like when you're ready to, you know, record or like write a song or an album, like what what is that kind of process for you? Well, I'll start with the first record. The first record I did, called up this this cat named Sean Flora up in Portland, and uh, just found him. And he has a gold record for the Shins and for Cake, and and so mm -hmm. he had some experience as a producer, and he also had a good studio. And so I recorded this these five songs. Me and my buddy Steve Amari got together, and, and we got together every week and worked on these. I didn't know what I was going to record when we started. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just gonna hire this dude we're gonna make some shit make some shit up real quick yeah and just go for it because i've been trying to figure out how to write a song the way i wanted to write it like i've been i kept throwing paint at the walls but nothing would stick because i was yeah. looking for a formula you know right and then me and steve worked out those tunes and those first five tunes on the first EP, uh, Three Days on the Wagon and Losers Weep and all those tunes. Yeah. You know? Yep. And I Want to Drink a Beer with You. And all those songs kind of were just little demos that I had been working out in my little home studio. And so we worked them out, got a good drummer and Nate Hansen and, and uh, who's 
as good a drummer as any. And, and then my buddy Thomas Creverson on the harmonica. And then we got Siobhan. I just, my buddy Brett hooked me up with this lady out yeah. of Portland who can sing like a dang. <laughs> she had this church voice, you know? Yeah. And so we went up there and like the course of two weeks, we got this, these five songs done. And I was very proud of those and I am still proud of them. Right. Um, but it kind of like launched me in a direction of how to do, you know, how to write my, my style of songs. And so, um, and from that, like we got a lot of, a lot of love from that locally, you know, cause we, we did a little music video about the Oakland Tavern. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Three days on a wagon. Yeah. 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 I saw that. And, um, we went and won the Battle of the Bands that year at the fairgrounds, which was cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was, I mean, it, it sounds funny, but it was like, there was like 2,000 people there. Oh, heck yeah. And they were all cheering it on. And yeah, it's like, a we big, won, that's won a like big five deal. grand. And that's awesome. A bunch of money. And all right. It was cool. And I, I played in Battle of the Bands a bunch of times. I yeah. never go in expecting to win or, yeah. yeah. But when we won, I was like, that's kind of cool. Got something here. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so I was very happy about that. Yeah. It's funny at the time. I was like, oh, battle bands. Is cool. <laughs> Why are we even doing this? this is dumb, right. You know, like, yeah. But when you, you know, when you get appreciated, it's, it's yeah. always cool. Like when you get a little recognition or something. Sure. Even yeah. if it's local. Sure. We should do battle of the podcast. Battle of the podcast? Yeah. It'd be so boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. So, so what, was, what was the first EP you had? What was it called? Extended, uh, extended, play, extended catalog. play catalog one. Yeah. Or yeah. So, Something dumb. I gotta, I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna redo all that and take those okay. first two EPs and put them together into one little record. That's okay. an awesome okay. idea. And, yes. uh, yeah. yeah. Make it less confusing and less dumb. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking with all that. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so was it two years ago then or a year ago you did Sad Songs for Stay at Home Dads? Yeah, about two years ago. Yeah. Yep. And that record, uh, we, I, my buddy Bart Budwig come down from Northern Oregon northwestern oregon and he's a pretty renowned songwriter himself and and kind of underground he produced craig um craigie's record he produced a bunch of different records uh, you know the ship twins and all that and there's a whole genre of northwest music that's kind of under the radar it flies under the radar but it's huge I love it's it. still huge you know mm -hmm. T tk and the holy know nothings and um tommy alexander uh willie t Taylor, you know, so there's a bunch, but Harmed Brothers, and they're all kind of Seattle, Portland, mm -hmm. that area, you know, it's mm -hmm. this whole genre of music. Mm -hmm. And anyways, I've never quite fit into that genre of music, but I got a hold of Bart, and I really like, we, me and Bart shared this, uh, as a matter of fact, we're right here next to the bagel tree, we shared this this immense uh, passion for bagels. You know? <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. And so... <laughs> That's kind of what you Who doesn't love a good bagel? That's yeah, kind of what yeah. brought us together is the <laughs> That's bagels. bagels. <laughs> and so he came down. I played these songs for him, and we went up to Michael Mendenhall's studio. He's a local musician in town. Okay. And uh, yeah, and Bart produced those songs, and I had all my friends on the record, and there's nothing nothing fake about it. It was yeah, just it was a good album. Todd Kleinsmith's on it, and old Tommy with uh, Tommy Whited with the. Uh, Widespread Haze. You probably yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. He makes drums around here. He's really good. And my buddy Brett Brooks on the bass. And so having Klein Smith on it was cool too because Klein Smith's kind of renowned around the country for his steel guitar, around the world for his steel guitars that he makes. And nice. So, so uh, he he's one of those, it's weird because when we opened for Charlie Crockett last year. Oh, cool. The steel guitar player comes up. He's like, is that Todd Klein Smith? And this dude's from Texas. Like, I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh my God, dude. What? I was going to buy one of his guitars. He's great. Like, <laughs> that's cool. awesome. Yeah. So Charlie Crock is, you know, a steel guitar player is a fan of yeah. Charlie Klein Smith and my band, which I yeah, was like. Yeah, that is awesome. Which Charlie Crock is blowing up now and it makes me even happier. Yeah. You know? Favorite bagel. Yeah. Favorite bagel. Yeah. The everything, dude. The everything. The everything bagel. You go cream cheese or what do you? What Guacamole. Do you Guacamole. Wow. I was not twist. expecting the not, guacamole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, there's a plot twist every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Guacamole. Bart, Bart Budwick, however, is a veggie. Interesting. The veggie cream cheese guy. Yeah. yeah. You know? See, I like a good cream cheese on a bagel. Yeah. Even peanut butter. I agree. I'll play one. You like, you like, what's your favorite bagel? The focaccia one they do once in a while. 
That's really good. And get like the sun dried tomato on that. Yeah, that's good. I like the jalapeno cheddar too. Yeah, that's a good one. Good. I mean, yeah, that's a classic. All right. Yeah. You know, all right. I think the everything I found that and kind of fell in love because I always like the garlic one, but then I always like right. the onion one. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then this one had kind of all of them on it. Right. <laughs> had everything on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Everything everywhere all at once. <laughs> So besides like your 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 family, where else do you draw like inspiration from when you're wanting to dive into uh, make music? Traveling is yeah. one that's been a big one so far. And you know what? I've been. It's funny you ask that question because I've been thinking about that a lot myself. Like, where should I draw? Right. Like, um, where's your muse? <laughs> yeah, I think women have been a muse for me. Yeah, you know, I've always loved them women. You sound like a musician, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and make songs for them, you know. Sure. I had a I had a girlfriend. She was kind of one of the new age hippie types. And she told me, she's like, you should go a little deeper with it. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? And she she turned me on to this Carl Jung uh, shadow work. And so now I've been doing all this inner shadow work lately with myself. Active imagination and all this. I don't know if you know what that is, but. And so I'm hoping that I get to a place where I can start to incorporate some of the, you know, get, do it in a non cheesy way. Yeah, yeah. The archetypal mm -hmm. um, things. Yeah. yeah. As long as you don't bring out the crystals, I think you'll be okay. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, hey, Fleetwood Mac got away with it. So. That's true, right? <laughs> That's true. I could put some shoulder pads on, dude. Do <laughs> R.I.P. I love it. Did she die? Stevie Nicks, didn't she pass away? Did, I, did, I, just, so did I just kill Stevie Nicks? I just killed her. <laughs> wow. I killed Stevie Nicks. <laughs> you did that disclaimer. Oh, my see? God. See? That's, that's right. why I do disclaimer. Keeps us safe. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll edit that out. Yeah. Um, um, that's funny. That's awesome. But anyways, yeah. no, but so far it's been like women traveling. Uh, you know, like one of my songs, I have a Montana song. You know, that's that Katie O'Katie tune. That's a good one. I love that one. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's about this gal that I met with her boyfriend and, and I met him at this gig I was playing up in Billings in Laurel and they got in a, fi a fist fight and took it out of the parking lot and that was the end of my gig. Wow. And so I wrote this song from the book about Katie from the boyfriend's perspective. She just brought yeah. the gig outside while they were just like scrapping. I know. I tried <laughs> to keep it going. I, I did yeah. keep it going, but they... They're like, now we got to cut it off. Yeah. But she was an MMA fighter and so she oh. beat the hell out of him. Like He got... I picked the wrong... That's wrong, yeah. wrong fight. Yeah, he did. I guess... I don't know. <laughs> it was wild. I like that song because it's got just a, a hinge of almost like an Irish pub song a mm -hmm. little bit. I love, yeah, that's one of my favorites of yours. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's awesome. And actually, it makes sense because you got old Bob Honey on the fiddle in that. And then yeah. you got, you got uh, Steve Erickson on the on the squeeze box, which they're, they're a couple of characters, man. Like I played with him, with Bob and Steve and... And Todd Kleinsmith and a hot quad string band, which is local to this area. And, and they do a lot of that pub Irish slash gypsy yeah, yeah. slash pirate music. Yes. <laughs> pirate music. And it's weird. It's like I, I always, every record, I always want to just play country music. I'm like, let's play country music. But then I'm like, I end up gathering these misfit music. <laughs> Ends up being something totally different. Yeah, it ends up being its own thing. And I yeah. kind of like that. You yeah, know? sure. You don't have to be stuck in a box with one genre. No. Yeah, you can do what the heck you want. I do want to make that that badass sound in country record. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, like, yeah, it's kind of funny how it's turned out so far. Yeah. You know, just a bunch of different musicians who don't even like country music. I like, <laughs> do country, country music. music. Right? Yeah, that's what it's been so far. <laughs> well, let's talk about, you mentioned traveling. Yeah. When, you, when you traveled across country to New York mm -hmm. in a van to hit up a bunch of breweries, how, yeah. how did you start that idea like this is well how did you even convince your family like i have an idea this is what i want to do let's do it what happened was i wanted to travel across the united states and so i was like i'm gonna just book a tour because i've been touring the west i've been in the west a bunch of times all the way down to new mexico up to montana and utah and but then i was like i want to go east and go to new york city and go see all the stuff and so I started trying to book this tour and a lot of the places I can play because I'm not really well known, you know, not a lot of people know who I am other than some of the places I play with the friends I've made. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, I better, I better come up with a theme to get me into some places. And so I was like, well, I play a lot of breweries. 
So what if I did 100 breweries in 100 days? Yeah. And then, Cause I'm kind of a salesman. I got to figure out a theme to get somebody hooked. Sure. And the yeah, idea yeah. was I'm going to go to this place. I'm going to taste your beer, but I'm also going to play. I'm going to make little videos. Sure. And I made a bunch of little videos, but it just didn't, you know, I didn't really follow through with that part of it. I just showed up and played. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me money and uh -huh. I drank all their beer. That's how it started. But then I told my ex-wife, I was like, Hey, let's go travel. Let's do, I want you guys to go with me. It'll be fun. We'll go to New York city and, but everybody around us was like, you're crazy. Why would you do that? Your babies are little. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to go in this old motor home, basically be homeless for three and a half months. Well, we had our home, you know, yeah, right. yeah. motor home. <laughs> home on wheels. It's a home on wheels. And so that's how it went down. Yeah. We agreed. And it probably broke up our marriage for sure. But <laughs> because, because, <laughs> you know, I got a little wild out there. Yeah. She's a, meanwhile, she's taking care of babies, but All right. you know, favorite brewery you went to favorite brewery. Okay. A couple of the venues I played weren't yeah. breweries. Okay. 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 That was like my main shtick was to try to get as many breweries okay. as I can. Cause that wasn't as many paying gigs that was going to pay for the trip. Yeah. But I had my manager at the time got me this gig at the Rockwood city music hall in New York city. And oh, that was awesome. probably, that was a kind of an iconic venue that I yeah, played. Sure. At. Yeah. I was pumped to play that. Oh. Everybody and their moms played that venue. Right. When they're coming up, you know? Right. So that was a cool one. Um, there was this brewery in West Virginia that I played, and they they went all out for me. It was in southern West Virginia. And I guess the story was when I, Tyler Childers was just blowing up at the time. And when I called him, he a year before Tyler Childers like kind of took off, Tyler Childers called to play this gig at this place and he turned him down and he said, no, no, we're not doing any musicians. Like, we need, you know, and then Tyler Childers blew up and like just took off. Yeah. And this dude always like felt bad about it. He's like, Oh, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I yeah. my shot. So right. every time a musician called him, like right. when a musician called him to play, he would always put him on and like put him on the news yeah. and like. Yeah. And so that's what they did for me. And so I walked in there and he just like they promoted it. It was in Princeton, West Virginia. Yeah, and put me on the news and yeah, I don't know. It was cool. That's I, awesome. They man. treated me really well down there. And then a bunch of people showed up and some dude pulled moonshine out of his pants. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I want to drink that. <laughs> right. Or maybe I will. Yeah, 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 maybe I'll try yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. a West Virginia story. Right. <laughs> Moonshine. Yeah. pants. Yeah. yeah. No, well, I'm not. I'm not joking. I yeah. love that. It was wild. And then. Uh, you didn't go blind, so. No. Here. <laughs> I mean, actually, my eyesight has degraded. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Uh, but you, then, yeah, you know, Louisiana was cool. Um Alabama was Mobile, Alabama was really cool. Nice. Um, I really like the Southeast. Yeah, a lot. There's just a lot. Of, it's a different vibe down there. You know, right. Way different than the West Coast. And, All right. So it was cool getting to go down there. And I played a lot of really cool places like mom and pop. Kind yeah. Of yeah. Breweries and yeah. It's hard to pick a favorite, but that one and there was one in Wisconsin that I played that. The whole bar kind of looked just like you guys. You know, everybody's got their beers. Like, they're all Norwegian. And, like, they got this, you know, yeah. this Norwegian yeah. way about them. And um, so I went and played that gig. It was up in Merrill, Wisconsin. Yeah. And they were just, like, throwing pizza at me. And, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're like, have a slice. And then just, like, literally throwing it at me. I'm like, okay, cool. And I grab it. I was like, hey, you got a towel? They throw it. Wet what? Yes. Yeah. It was, like, wild. It was on a Monday night, and they were all partying their ass off, dude. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Wisconsin. Was the pizza good? Pizza was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a different kind of pizza, man. Right. It was like the thin slice. Uh, yes. It might have. It might as well have been a pizza tour, too, because I have pizza <laughs> right. in 43 states, I feel yeah. like. You know? I love pizza. I grew up right. back east, so I, I know a good slice of pizza. Oh, I gained yeah. like 30 pounds, dog. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like 30 pounds of beer and pizza on yeah. that trip. Man, that is awesome. Did you did you like take a bunch of pictures and stuff? Like, do you mm -hmm. yeah capture a bunch of memory and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. I tried to get as much as I could along right. the way. You know, we ran into Robert De Niro in New York City. Oh really? Yeah, on the street. Wow. Yeah, I you're was like, like I'm Neil Gregory Johnson, sir. Not quite. I looked over and I was stunned. I was like, yeah. oh, it's you. And he's like, 
How you doing? <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? Hello. Like, you want to go get some pizza? Sure. <laughs> yeah, Bob De Niro. I'm yeah. Bob De Niro. Yeah, but you already know that. <laughs> right. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> so cool. It was great. Uh, do you have like uh, favorite artists or artists uh, right now that you listen to? I'm sorry, right oh, now. there's some new ones. There's one called a guy named Zach Top, which I like him. Dale Watson. I mean, I got my classics that I listen to. Yeah. yeah. Dale Watson, Jerry Jeff Walker. Zach Top's a newer one that I like. Mm-hmm. Coulter Wall, I guess. Tyler Childers. Mm-hmm. Um, Charlie Crockett. I don't know. I like Stapleton. He's pretty good. Chris Stapleton. Yeah. 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 I listen. I just been listening to a bunch of old '90s country lately. Yeah, how oh, fucking good Garth Brooks and George Strait. Yeah, like yeah. George Strait, a lot of George Strait, a lot of George Strait, and Clint Black. Yeah, and like, and you know Randy Travis. Yeah, yeah. I That's, just I've been polluting my brain with '90s country this year. Yeah, because I haven't yeah. been playing too much, yeah. and it's like my sit around and drink beer music. You know, like sure. Yeah, summertime music. Sure. Yeah. And now that we're getting into the fall, it feels kind of like depressing to play that. Music. <laughs> yes. You know. Yeah, I feel like I need to get a new kick. Like, a, <laughs> start listening to some uh, some K-pop or something. Yeah, <laughs> some K-pop. I love K-pop. Yeah, um, Joe not... Diffie. Joe Diffie was oh. my dad's favorite, dude. I'm so glad you brought up Joe Diffie because that dude is the man. Thank when you. He died. I was like bummed out. Yes, I did a little cover for him online, but yeah. And then I go and listen to all of his all of his tunes. His whole catalog is so good. Yeah, bigger than the Beatles. I mean. That song is a classic. Yeah. And I forgot yeah. all about it. And I'm like, I was in that the end that with my girl. I'm like, dude, this bigger than the Beatles song is great. You know? Kind of represent. I feel like it yeah. represents me. You know, it's all about a kid in the club who's playing this like reminds me of the Village Green when I was playing Village Green at the Cottage Grove. And then there's a hot bartender and they're like, She's gonna be an actor, he's gonna be a big star. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then like, but in the meantime, they're just chilling in this bar, you know. Right. Uh but they're both but they got love bigger than the Beatles, all right? Great concept. Whoever mm-hmm. wrote that song. Right? Genius. Man. Yeah. Have you old. This may be a weird question, but have you ever played somewhere and you're you're playing, you're into your act, and you notice that people are more into drinking and eating than they're wanting to listen? Oh, dude. That's like the majority of my gigs, man. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, how do you like how like cause they always hear like, you know, comedians they'll play they'll they'll yeah. do like a gig and like you know, they, they, you just have to continue on to your act. I mean, how do you like push forward and be like, this is, I'm playing because I love music, you know, like how do you That's continue into your, your night, you know, without feeling like disrespected that no one's paying attention to you? You know what? You know, I've battled that mm-hmm. my whole time playing and I got burned out for a long time because of it. Mm-hmm. But I always come back to the same old place, which is something my mom told me a long time ago is, they don't owe you anything. Mm-hmm. They don't owe you their attention. Yeah. You know? Right. I'm not a victim for that. I'm lucky that I'm grateful that I get to go up and play music. Right. And I get the opportunity to try to get their attention. It's an opportunity to hopefully get their attention through my music being good or my performance being good. Or maybe I tell a dumb joke, it gets a laugh. There you go. And so the more I approach it with that mindset and that attitude, that it's not their fault that they're talking and eat food and right you know i could be all sad and mad about all i want but it's only just going to affect my set it's only going to affect how i do things people don't want to see a musician who isn't having fun you know that's kind of why i had to take a break this year because i wasn't having any fun with it um but now that i start to integrate it more into my life again playing gigs um uh, you know i just i always have to remind myself they don't owe me anything, you know? This is an opportunity for me to get their attention. It's a challenge, you know? It should be a challenge for a musician. So sure. anytime I hear like somebody, a music man complaining, oh, their TVs are on and blah, 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 these distractions, they're looking at their phones. It's like, dude, you have an opportunity to get their attention, yeah. to be a better performer, you know? Right. If you can overcome all of those distractions in the world for five minutes, even 20 minutes so and they're just watching you play and you're performing for them that means you're getting better as a performer Mm -hmm. so that's that's my mindset sure it's the no victim mindset sure Sure. that's where i'm at (laughs) i mean we can uh, you know we don't do stuff live but we can almost kind of relate to you know you know i mean we don't have the biggest you know 
views or listeners, but we still love doing this. I mean, it's it's a creative output for us too. So we we totally totally. Yeah, you got to find something to that you love about it. You right. Know? Right. And if you like having good conversations, and this is right, right. up your alley, right? right? Absolutely. I don't, yeah. I don't for me. Recording and all that, the hardest part is it's like exercise. It's getting to the gym. It's right. like getting all the stuff set up, right. making the plans, you know, right. making, you know, hey, nailing it down for the schedule on Saturday, you know, like, and then what if they don't show up? All right. What's plan B? You know, like, right. You know, so, <laughs> right. Yeah. No, we so get it. That's, that's always the stuff that I don't like. It's like having a band, like. Oh, I, so I got to get a hold of five dudes, right? Yeah, that are like basically just sitting around in their underwear all day, <laughs> crackers, and I got to get them to show right. up somewhere at the on same, time, on time, right? Which never happens. <laughs> you got to give them a time and then anticipate right. an right. hour later. Yeah, right, right. It's That's like, so weird how that relates to Dungeons and Dragons because then the same yeah. issue. You get five nerds that know are in their underwear eating crackers. We got to show up at the same yeah. time to go through a dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> Don't 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 entertain, the worst don't entertain that. <laughs> I was don't entertain that. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, wow, that we got the, the same, same problem. <laughs> it's the same, same thing. D and D edition. Yeah, it's, it's pretty relatable. We're all yeah. yeah, yeah. It is what it is. It's man. a passion. Well, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Uh, go to beer. Your your go to beer. If you're like, this is the beer I'm having tonight. This is my go to beer. I'm trying to watch my figure lately, so I don't drink as much beer. Yeah, I'd say tequila. But, go to drink, yeah. yeah. But I like good bourbon. I've been on a bourbon kick lately. I like bourbon too, but you know what? I was drinking whiskey there for a while, and it was kind of like um, I was like, I need a happy drink. Yeah. So tequila is kind of like yeah. I just like the it's like it's a party out. mode. Tequila, right. <laughs> right? As opposed to whiskey, right? Right. I get it. You know, what about you, Mark? See, <laughs> what about is, you? This is where Mark embarrasses himself again. Uh, absinthe mm. is my go-to. Well, that's. That's hardcore. Thank you. Thank you. I, oh, I got a new sugar cube. I'm not. <laughs> oh, you're talking acid. No, no. Oh, LSD. Abs- <laughs> oh, no. Absinthe. Man, yeah. I did. I did some. All right. Yeah. I'll tell you an acid story. Yes. That. Let's do it. We started absinthe and acid rhymes with absinthe. So I wrote a song recently uh, <laughs> about COVID year. I decided I got nominated for an award for one of my tunes, and so okay. I decided to drive to Tennessee. Oh, cool! Nice. And I was going through, you know, pretty hard time in my personal life, so I was like, your, "What is your favorite song that you've done and released?" Oh man, that's a hard question. Right. And for our uh, listeners, while you think about this, for our listeners, you are on Spotify, Neil Gregory Johnson, and that's where I've been listening to you. So, oh, um, cool. Yeah. Yep. Spotify, Apple Music, all the things. <laughs> all the things. I'm on a. I, I like my kids like the funny train song. Yeah. It's a, it's and a good uh, song. they always ask, they request that one. So I guess that's my favorite right now. Cause, okay. Cause that one, they like that one. Yeah. I got a five year old and an eight year old. So they're like, funny, pl- play funny train day. Yeah. So, that's a good one. And then I uh, photograph. I like that song that's too. That's a good one. That one, I wrote that when John Prine passed away. Mm. Big John Prine fan. I love cool to be cool, fun to be fun. That one's my favorite. That's a good one, too. I like that song, too. I wrote that. I was in a bad place when I wrote that song because I just got my ass just kicked. Like, I I went to this party, and I stopped drinking for a while, and, and then I drank a bunch of rum. One thing led to another, and I got in this huge fist fight with a bunch of redneck dudes. Usually just, doesn't turn out well. Yeah, and I just got beat up. Drove my car down a mountain. Um, luckily, everything was unscathed, and we were good. But I was in a bad way there for a good month or two, just depression, mm. you know? Mm. And so I put that song together. And, mm. and I also had, like, I have a friend. We go up and watch music, like these music videos on the, what do you call that, the outside projector screen or whatever. And he like, that guy's just too cool. And I used to get really insecure every time some, he'd say that. I'd be like, for some reason, because I'm like, I guess I'm not cool, you know. I wish I was cooler, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like Dale Watson. We watch the Dale Watson videos. Like, how do you, how do you get that? How do you become that cool? He looks like Elvis, you know, like, or just like, how do you get Elvis cool? Or like, sure. And so I got, I think about that every day too. Yeah. How do I become Elvis cool, Mark? I gave up. Yeah. I know. So that's kind of where that song come from. You know, it's cool to be cool. Yeah. It's fun to be fun. 
Yeah. 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 That's that songwriting in a nutshell right, right yeah. there. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a, like a favorite artist or, or band or that you would want to like meet and record with? Oh, dude, Dale would be a big one. Dale Watson. Mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah. I mean, anyone that had a bunch of listeners. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> any, Makes, any artist that's right. crushing it. Right. And like, would, sure. Um, to where they li like listen to my song and or li listen, you know, do my thing. Right. I don't know. It's it's always that thing. It's always this huge competition. Like, yeah. How many listeners can we get? Have you ever thought about going on like any of those shows? The voice or I got a voice story. Dude, oh. really? Yeah. Okay. So I got invited to do the voice. Oh, cool. Like the tryout. Yeah. Up in Portland. And so I drove up. Uh, I was like, I've always hated those shows because I'm like, Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, what do you think about when you see those shows yeah, and like people going out there and stuff? They make me cringe and I don't yeah. like them. Yeah. But because I don't, I'm not a big fan of a lot of pop music. So, I mean, it's all right. And I appreciate it. Whatever. It's just not my cup of tea. Sure. But, uh, and then also the competition thing is just so cheesy, you know, because I grew <laughs> up like in bar bands. Like, you're right. not supposed to be good and you're not supposed to be good looking. You're supposed to be. I like the ugliest, the ugly playing, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and singing like angels, you know, right, on some obscure Doctor Hook song, you know. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see that on the the, the America's Got Talent, right? Voice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And anyways, um, I got invited to do the voice, and I was like, you know what? That's kind of cool. I'm going to do it. How did they reach out? How did they invite you? Like in my email, they just they sent me. The dude sent me an email. Some recruiter guy. Yeah. It was like, come up to Portland this day and this day. Man, that is we so cool. To... Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't feel anything out. Right. Even... They had to have like recognized you, like noticed they somebody. They found me like... on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. is awesome. And I was like, that's badass. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm flattered. So I show up and there's this one cat that I recognized from the Portland scene with this really nice guitar. And then there's, so we bonded a little bit. We're BS. And then there's another guy who's a blind guy. And he was blind and he had somebody walking him and and I looked at this cat, you know, and I'm like, Oh, okay, what's gonna happen here? <laughs> right. It's gonna he's, be amazing. He's good TV. I bet he's good. All right. He goes in there really good. Yeah. Doing like some Ray Charles, oh, like yeah. right. on the piano, like just killing it. Doing the whole thing. All right. And then I love Ray I Charles. I forget what happened, but anyways, somebody said, Wow, how do you follow that? We might as well all go home. And I was like, and then whoever the boss was there, I was like, ah, don't worry, I'm deaf, so we'll be all right. So like, <laughs> I got a chance, you know what I mean? And so she did not that's laugh. That's amazing. The, yeah, that's yeah. a good joke. The gal didn't laugh. What? That's funny. And I walked in. They're supposed to give me three songs, but they wouldn't even let me get through one. And I'm Why? Like, I don't know. That's, that's, that's annoying. annoying. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder if that guy ended up getting on like the live shows and stuff. I think he got really far in it. Yeah. But I don't know. I just walked out and got some Mexican food. There you go. <laughs> like, do you ever just like it all worked out? You mentioned like, I wasn't even mad yeah. about it. I was like, you mentioned like driving to like Tennessee and just showing up and be like, "Hey, can I play here?" Do you do that often? Like, just like I want to just drive somewhere and like show up at a bar or wherever and be like, "Will you guys let me play for the night?" I used to do it all the time. Yeah. Like, all right. I haven't been doing it too much this year, but actually, I did one uh, up in. Uh, towards the coast not too long ago i showed up there and it's like hey you got a stage here can i play and i did and came out with like 150 bucks that's awesome cool and uh i was like all right do you so, have yeah do you ever do you have like i have, music? I have the ability to get in and right. with the locals and just chop it up right yeah. and then then the locals usually vouch for me they'll be like hey get this guy singing up there. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. you know yeah but so. do you show up with like a certain set in mind or like certain songs you want to play in mind or you just kind of like go with the flow and like whatever comes to mind, that's what you're going to play? Pretty much. That's yeah. it. I go with the flow. Yeah. I have a bunch of covers that I've learned over the years that I'll go and I'll play some of that or yeah, crowd pleasers. Yeah. I got to watch it with the drink in these days because if I have too many boozes, I forget all my lyrics. It's horrible. <laughs> So I got to watch that. You yeah, need yeah. cue cards in the audience, like yeah. someone holding up your, <laughs> your know, lyrics yeah. for you. <laughs> exactly, dude. Help you out. <laughs> I, I think I'm getting old enough to now to where I'm like, I got to watch that booze. I'm yeah. Gonna sit and drink coffee. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so do you, um, 
do you have like a favorite venue you've played like all time? Like you're you like you wish you would go back there and play again? Mm -hmm. I had to think about this. Uh I think my favorite show, and it wasn't just because of the venue, it was because of the artist mm -hmm. Charlie Crockett was last year. Mm. And that was kind of a big symbolic thing for me in my life. And I and it might not have been a big deal for a lot of musicians because a lot of people do that all the time. But I went to play for like 700 people and they were all in front of me, oh, wow. you know, and they all treated us like we we're somebody. And, we, and it was cool. The band got out there and then I was like, I'm going to come out last. And so I come out last and the whole place just, you know, roared. And then we proceeded to kick ass and crush yeah, it. Yeah. And then that made me really happy. And what's that feeling like when you are in that moment hearing 700 people just go wild? It's a rush, dude. Yeah. It's a rush. I wish I could do that every day. Yeah. You know, it's it gets to be an addiction. Like even, even now, you know, when I have a good night, you know, which a good night for me is like 50 to 75 people and they're all dancing and partying. Sure. You know, having a good time. Uh, it's addicting, dude. It's like when it's a good night, it's good. Sure. But you got to suffer through like seven or eight bad ones to get to oh, yeah. two or three right. good ones, you know? Yeah. Although lately, it's I think it's about an attitude too because I've been having some good ones because I've been having fun, you know? Yeah. Another show that I really liked was at the Axe and Fiddle in Cottage Grove at one time. And I played there a bunch of times, but this one time in particular, um, I had my band with me. And the whole town, I had played the Village Green for years, for like five or six years, every Monday and Tuesday up there in Cottage Grove. And so I met a lot of friends from that area, but they all showed up one night at the Axe and Fiddle afterwards, or like at the, after I was done with that, that whole era, I played this gig at the Axe and Fiddle. They all showed up, the whole town was there, dancing and partying and like singing along with my songs. Cause they that's all awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And that was cool. That was yeah. a good night for that's me. That's awesome. Um, so what is the like dream or like the goal for you now that you were talking about getting back into music? Like, where do you want, where do you want to go? Like, where do you see yourself, you know, going with your music? I kind of just want to go where people, um, see my value, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I think that it's easy to, to diminish your own value when you're with people who don't see it. Sure. You know? Yeah. And so I'd like to find a place or a, where people see my value and they're like, wow, we, you know, they recognize it and they see the music. Cause I, I really believe in my tunes and I think they're worthy. I think they're, I think like if I had the right people backing me, I could sell a tune to, to a bigger artist or I could, you know? Yeah. And so, I, so I believe in it, you know, I just, I want to be working with people who believe in what I'm doing and, and also I believe in what they're doing and, Right now, I got a really good booking manager who's crushing it on in his life, and so that's a help, you know. And right. so, I just want to be playing those kind of. I want to have that recognition, but also be playing shows to where people are willing to pay thirty bucks a ticket, and yeah. they know what they're going to get, and they're yeah. going to get a good show. They're going to get a good, uh, a good time, you know. Mm -hmm. And I have some cool merch, and buy a T-shirt and a CD, and, sure, and sing along to a song, and that makes me happy, right. you know. Yeah. So I'm hoping that that get to that place where I can I can do that and not have to do the whole run around where sure playing to a bunch of people <laughs> looking at their phone <laughs> right, you know, right or have to keep doing that challenge the get your attention challenge every night right, right? yeah so just play louder <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's usually the thing dude you right. gotta get one of those uh, suitcase kick drops <laughs> right right right. <laughs> right. 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 Heck yeah. We were, I was at North 40, I don't know, a few weeks ago and, uh, there was a band there and it was, it was like an older cover band. They were playing some really old, cool stuff. And before they, they started playing, a woman walked in. She was like, I, it was either, uh, she was had like a walker or like a, some sort of form thing to help her walk. And I was like, 
no way this lady's part of the band. She sat down to start killing it on the bass. Hell yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I was just blown away. I'm like, a minute ago she was struggling to walk in, but she just sat down the whole time and just like killed it on the bass. Like that was absolutely amazing. That's great. Yeah. It's like you never, never know who's going to be part of the band when you can. She, <laughs> she was struggling to walk in. Door, right. She was just sat down. Walk she on was that just bass. killing it. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. She was walking that bass like <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. If you can invite three people to a dinner party, dead or alive, who would they be? Uh, I feel like I want to invite my heroes, but then. What, what do they say? What yeah, they, what's yeah. the saying? Never, never meet never, your, never meet your heroes. heroes. Yeah. yeah. I'd probably say Dale Watson, Jerry Jeff Walker, John Prine. And I would, guess I would just sit and listen to them in awe and I wouldn't say a word. I love that. You know? Yeah. Or if I wanted to be involved, I'd just invite some of my friends, yeah. invite, you know, maybe get my mom over there. Yeah. That's cool. Or, uh, yeah, I'd have to That's go. That's a good with, question. Yeah. John, little John Prine, Jerry Jeff. Dale Watson. Yeah. Okay. That works. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about like going, have you ever played like overseas, like in other countries? Like, yeah, I'd like to. Yeah. yeah. Help me book a tour, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been watching like this random like documentary on Amazon Prime. It was, it's uh, Irish pubs. Yeah. And like they just have like, Every Thursday, like this one Irish pub, they just like shut it down. Have like twenty musicians come in and just like jam while people sit around and drink Guinness. And oh yeah, and dude, I'm like, that's a thing, right? That's a thing over there. You know, it's all Irish music, and, right? No, I would love to do that, man. Um, I don't know. I haven't really been very passionate or motivated towards working towards anything other than paying my bills. Sure, lately. <laughs> Well, you gotta pay the now. bill. You gotta, yes, I mean, it's priority one right, right now. And making sure my kids go to school on time. Right. And, right. Yep. and uh, but I'm gonna get there. I'm going to play in Tahoe this month. Oh, cool! Uh, nice. For a three day run. Oh, cool. In Truckee, at the Truckee sure. Hotel. Hotel. And uh, that's a good gig. I'm taking Jason Heald, uh, the director of music in college at the UCC, and. Then, um, Todd Klein Smith's gonna play some steel guitar, and so awesome. that'll be a good time. Yeah, yeah. and so I'll, I'm doing a little bit of traveling again yeah. here and there, yeah. but that's it'll awesome. probably just be West Coast for a while. And if any, if they want to listen to all your other previous music, what's the best spot to uh, to hear Neil Gregory Johnson? Oh, NeilGregoryJohnson dot com. Uh, you can find the Spotify, the Apple Music, um, all that stuff. If you want to know where my shows are, you just Google. Okay, just use your Google and YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Neil Gregory Johnson. Yep. Is the best way to get a hold of you is through your website or do you have an email address? Um, yeah, either way. I'm really terrible about responding these days because I get overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah. So no problem. And uh, I'll ask. I'll let Mark ask the hard oh, questions. Oh man, yeah. These are, we ask everyone these last two favorite oh. these burning questions here. What's your favorite movie? Oh, favorite movie. Braveheart. Ooh, Ooh. that's a good one. Braveheart. Yep. All day. All day. Always been. Now, it's a toss up between that Captain Ron Captain Ron that's a cool one <laughs> yeah there you go I like I leave you get a, you get a comedy and a good you know <laughs> yeah I like it good okay uh, favorite sandwich sandwich uh, like the grinder I, I always had this idea to do you know how they have like a a grinder app but do like a different grinder app for sandwiches <laughs> and like misspell it a little bit, but then they do like, what's your favorite grinder in this town? And you swipe right, yeah. swipe, swipe left, you know? Brilliant. So like an OT grinder would be. Yeah. yeah. I always thought that'd be great because yeah. the grinder, the, the, gay, the gay grinder. Yeah, yeah. Sue. Yeah. Yeah. Then we, you know, I could sell, you know, just do an insurance right? deal and then yeah. make some money. And there's a foot lawn joke there you can make all day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also tender meats. See? There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it works. We've broken into the market. There we go. Yeah. Don't steal that idea. <laughs> we won't. We won't. We might, but we won't. If you do, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of cool, man. Yeah. Also, I don't know. Sandwich. I just make a breakfast sandwich, dude. Yeah. yeah. I eat breakfast sandwiches more than anything. Mm -hmm. Just a hash brown. One of those cheap little square hash browns mm -hmm. from the used food store. Gosh, I love hash browns. Me too. Yeah. And then throw a little curry and some, uh, some chilies. Yeah. Pat it on there, and then throw a couple two eggs on there. Yeah, make a little breakfast sandwich. Okay. Yeah, some sriracha on top. <laughs> Sounds delicious, and it's about lunchtime. Look at that, we nailed it. Um, Neil, thank you so much, yes. man. Thank you. Anything else you wanted? Let's let people know about your music. You. It makes me really, really happy if you learn the lyrics and you go to a show and sing along with me.
Awesome. That's all. Awesome. Well, we that. really, really appreciate yeah. you know, meeting you and and you and you and uh, giving us your time today. And uh, right. and I look forward to seeing you tonight too at North Forty. So cool. Again, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Oh